guys, so I decided to quickly look up if the rice of the plant itself, like the grains, are actually the seeds, and it turns out they are. So we'll be making the grains uh, seeds, and then we'll be making a recipe later on with them. So once we have that information, we needed to actually to create some seeds or the rice that we'll be using for the texture. And I figured we already have the texture for the um, first stage of the rice. So we could probably get away with actually just reorganizing these a little bit, compacting them down so we can basically create a more unique texture. So from that, what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to just kind of duplicate it just so it's a little bit randomized a little bit more. And then I'm gonna get the colors from the first stage or the second stage, pardon me. And I'm going to basically just add them randomly around and some of these I'm going to double up just so there's a little bit more variant. And then I'm going to make sure that the texture is good to go. So once I have that, I'm going to save these seeds and then we can move on to actually implementing the item for the seeds themselves. So I'm going to create a new folder uh, for rice seeds and then I'm going to go ahead and basically apply the texture so I need to import that first I'm going to go to the seeds tab or the uh, seeds item I'm just going to set this up really quickly we're going to add our own mechanics and stuff later on so we don't really need to worry about all this uh, particular stuff we just need it to basically stack up to 64 so once we've done that I'm um, just going over the inventory we're good there and the only thing that we need to set up is the procedure I'm going to generate that now and then we can later on uh, maybe we'll do it right now the um, script for actually placing the blocks for the seeds we're also going to need to remove the seeds from the player's inventory so we need to test if the block that they're right clicking on is our custom farmland and if that's the case then i want to make sure that we use a tag so we can use any variant of that particular custom farmland uh, which I already have a tag set up. Uh, we've been using this tag in other scripts, so we can go ahead and make this um, feasible for basically running our right-click event as well. So I want to add an and statement so we can go ahead and add support for the block above, and we're going to test if the block above is error. So uh, the reason why I want it to be error is because if it's not error, then we don't want to place the seeds. That would mean that there is a block already there and like a crop or something like that. And that would not be good. It would just basically break the block. So I want to make sure that the block gets replaced only if there's error above as the player could click on the side of the block or any other side and it would still count as basically right clicking on it not just the top so once we have that we need to go ahead and test if the main hand or provided item is our main hand item uh, this is important because later on then what we're going to do is we're going to just use provided item for our script down here so I was going to originally going to use the main hand item but I, I did end up switching it up for provided item instead uh, this was because it wasn't, we already were testing, and it's shorter amount of blocks to use provided item compared to the uh, main hand item. So uh, it's a lot easier to compact that way. So I just ended up switching this up. And as you can see, I'm only going to run this script to remove the item from the inventory if the player is not in creative mode. So basically survival or adventure, this will affect. Uh, spectator doesn't really have an inventory per se, so it won't matter too much. All right, so the next thing that I needed to do was I needed to go ahead and set up a global trigger for uh, when the player, uh, I believe it sleeps. So I w there was this problem that we discovered last episode uh, where there was, um, when the player sleeps, they would wake up and it wouldn't change the time of the day. So we're going to fix that in today's video as well. Uh, this is this video is pretty much packed with a whole bunch of fixes and stuff like that. So <laughs> uh, there's tons of different things that I worked on in this particular video. So I wanted to test for the actual 
dimension that the entity is waking up in. And then I want to basically go ahead and uh, test for our, our dimension itself. So it took me a little while to find the blocks. I think some of the methods, like the, the way that it's set up has changed recently in some of the newer versions from the last time I used it. But uh, basically I'm just going to apply a custom or the, um, I believe that's the execute command. And then I'm setting the time to uh, I believe it's zero ticks, so that will allow the one tick delay or one tick uh, mechanics still to work. So it should be the same time that the player wakes up. I'm not sure if this is exactly the command, so I ended up going in game and just basically testing quickly if this would work. And it turns out it does. So it will reset when we're actually sleeping in the world, which is perfect. And it's specified specifically to this world. So if we don't want it to happen in other worlds, it will still allow other mods to have priority, which is perfect. All right, so uh, now what we need to do is I wanted to go ahead and test some stuff out in game. Uh, there was, I believe I ended up exiting out because I was gonna go work on something else. But um, I've been noticing there's some weird texturing glitches going on i don't know if it's forge or nvidia nvidia had a recently an update and i had to mess around with my monitors and stuff like that but um anyhow i i was kind of got distracted from that but what i ended up uh doing was i needed uh just regular dirt for testing the how the crops are actually how the hitboxes actually work so basically what i was doing was i ended up grabbing a hoe I tilled some of this uh, regular crop like tilled soil and then I wanted to go ahead and just grab a couple seeds and of course they changed everything around in more recent versions so I could find the seeds at all I'm like looking over all of the tabs I'm like where are the seeds now you'd think they would be under materials but I mean apparently they're not under that tab i mean some of the carrots and stuff are under the food it's just it's it's really hard to find anything these days to actually locate like some things are under certain tabs some things are under two tabs and you're just like what questioning why anyhow as you can see the hitboxes grows with the um actual shape and we're not doing that currently and i think that's our problem that we're that we're running into so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that couple other seeds that use this particular mechanics uh, we'll try wheat seeds just to see if it's uh, set up so I'm going to use bone meal on it just to kind of speed up this process and it does look like it increases based on the pixel height of the image so we can do that same mechanic with our custom crops and it should fix that uh, breaking issue when we're actually setting it up. So I'm, I'm going to go through all of these. We don't actually need the 0 .001 uh, for the hitbox because we're not using custom farmland or we're using custom farmland. We're not using the vanilla farmland. So we don't need to take that in consideration when we're actually working on it. So I'm gonna measure each uh, texture and then I'm basically going to go ahead and update the hitbox for the height. Uh, the width and the depth are pretty much good to go, but I need to make sure that all the particular pixels are set up in a way that it will allow us to easily break the crops without needing to worry about, you know, um, having odd mechanics and end up breaking the tilled soil or something like that. So basically that's what I'm going to be doing right now. It's going to take a little while to do all this and then we can move on to some of the seed implement implementation for the actual mechanics and stuff like that. So this is the seed one. This is these from this point on it's just 16 and 16 so I can finish these hit boxes really quickly and set up the um mechanics for that so we're going to set that to zero and that to 16 and then we're all good for that uh there's a couple other things that i want to do like for example we want to make sure that um we have a loot table set for some of these items for example the loot table what we're going to do is we're going to uh, allow it to basically break we want to also set the creative pick item to our seeds itself so we can basically plant these blocks uh regardless of which one 
we right click on with our middle mouse button. So I guess it's not right clicking, it's just middle mouse button click. I don't know how you would say that, but we need to set up um, basically loot tables for all these and paste in the, I can't remember the name of the tag. It's uh, in the help text, it's always auto generated. So we can set up that and then we can make sure that we have our seeds drop. Um, I'm going to basically, for the larger ones, we're going to probably end up um, making it procedurally generated. Uh, so when the player breaks the block, it will probably be affected by um, the properties of the block itself. Uh, when and other conditions, like if there is weeds or rocks, I, I remembered that we had that mechanics put into the thing. So we'll have to adapt that later on. But... The important thing is to get up th or get the system set up for the other uh, crops themselves. We don't technically even need loot tables for all the other stages, but it's important to have something set up. And the dead stage won't drop any uh, any rice seeds. So placing these down, you can kind of see that we're basically having the same mechanics that we are. We have the um, thing that we had with the block that we're placing but now we're basically we can place down the seeds themselves and it will automatically place the block uh if we right click on the block itself it shouldn't actually place because we're not clicking on the tilled soil and there's not air above it so that's basically it i'm going to go ahead and just test this out and then we can go ahead and uh see if the stages all work so i'm going to set the game mode to creative or pardon me survival and then what we'll end up doing is we'll just test our hitboxes a little bit so i wanted to know if the blocks are going to end up dropping the seeds and it looks like it's going to do that so that's good uh, we can move on to actually getting the mechanics set up for the dropping for the procedure and procedure based dropping and stuff like that so that will take a little bit more time to do uh we have a little bit more time today so i'm going to work on that and we can go back into m crater just in a sec so once we've done that i'm going to go ahead and go to our stage five which is our lowest uh setting and we're going to go ahead and set up the procedure for basically when the block is either destroyed by explosion or by the player and uh, we can just stick to the world um, dependency and not have entity support and then we should be able to use both of the the scripts in both of the trigger types so I needed to figure out what I was going to end up using for the mechanics and I had the we have like the um, pH level we have uh, fertility we have um, what was it the soil composition so there's those three properties that i have to remember what we were going to use those for i think it has to do with the soil particular thing or the growth speed i don't know if that's going to really matter too much now that we have a different system set up but uh what we will end up doing is trying to blend those mechanics in but we need the basically the wheat uh weed level and the um rockiness level that we'll be testing for all the conditions now there are a whole bunch of different conditions that these could either be from like zero to four so i needed to figure out a way that we could basically go ahead and summarize all the different stages and values so i ended up creating a variable and applying that variable to the uh basically or applying both of those numbers to the variable and then i could basically summarize the variable based on a range uh based on the level that it is so basically i'm getting the variable and then i'm testing um for a value so if it's zero that means there's no weeds or no rocks and that will allow it to go ahead and grow uh, we use the equal sign for that and then for the other stages so if it's basically equal to or less or equal to or greater than and then we want to set it up in a order of being highest to lowest so we'll actually shift these blocks around a little bit so we'll start with like 
I think it goes up to eight, right? So we want it to go up to like six, uh, four, or something around those lines. So I had to figure out exactly what I needed to do for this. And I think I ended up needing to use uneven numbers and that br broke it down into something that was a little bit more balanced. Uh, for the other script up here, uh, what I needed to do is make sure that it ran on server side. And I was just trying to play around with some of these other properties and I wasn't sure if I needed a whole bunch of other stuff, but later on I could start working on the particular thing and I needed to actually test if the block below uh, was the tilled farmland or tilled soil. So once I've done that, I could basically uh, test for the other conditions and I think it's running on server side as well. So once I've done that, I could basically specify the random number for the amount of seeds to drop and this will allow us to use the repeater as our basically source of randomization for the seeds. So based on the percentage of how um, either rocky and how weedy the soil it is, I uh, will give seeds based on that value. So that will allow us to drop seeds either by explosion or when the player is basically breaking the seed, the, seed, the, um, the crop itself. So this is for the fifth and sixth stage. The sixth stage has a little bit more um, seeds that drop. It goes between three and four, I think, or two and four, one of the two. And the uh, ones on the, for the, uh, what do you call it, the other percent is a little bit lower. All right, so in game, I just wanted to test some of this stuff out. I had to change some of the properties a little bit more uh, for the thing. So I just wanted to basically throw all these seeds out and just kind of get an idea of how many seeds I can get from this particular stage. So I'm getting three for each one of these. And I wanted to see if there was, yeah, this one just gave us two. So this works perfect. All right, so we're gonna leave the rest and then we're gonna actually sleep. And then it should go to the next stage and then we'll be able to go ahead and harvest all this up. So let's go ahead and well, I broke too many actually. So we'll go ahead and uh, throw all this in that pile and then we'll just try to break one at a time. So we should get a range between I believe three and four. So we've been getting four so far. And again, once we have this all set up, then what we can end up doing is we can go ahead and uh, allow us to basically cook the seeds or replant them and then we'll be able to redo it. So we did get three and four. Anyhow, uh, it should give us, let's just quickly test to see how many it will give us when the cropland is in ideal conditions. So we just about got uh, three stacks and a half of seeds from this one field. We probably would have if we didn't harvest the other plants from the um, for the first stage. So we, we I think it's a viable amount of resources for this one particular crop. And as time goes on, we can make specific food and stuff like that. I have more plans specific to this feature, but that's all the time that I have for today. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.